Kabul police headquarters have confirmed that an explosion rocked the Afghan capital this morning. At least eight people have been killed in the explosion and 15 others have been wounded. When the explosion happened in Spinkalai Square in PD5 area of Kabul, a security source said the car bomb detonated in the west of the capital. Children, women and elderly are among the injured. Houses around the attack site have also been severely damaged. Three vehicles also caught fire in the area. Parliament member Haji Khan Mohammed Vardak's vehicle was the target of this explosion. However, Vardak has survived this attack. Eyewitnesses say that more casualties are still feared. For days, scientists and opposition politicians have been saying it. The government shouldn't be letting so many English households mix over Christmas. On Saturday, Boris Johnson relented. It is with a very heavy heart, I must tell you, we cannot continue with Christmas as planned. A new coronavirus variant was spreading alarmingly in London and the South East, he said, adding that the World Health Organization had been alerted to the mutant strain. It's 70 percent more transmissible and a new fourth tier of restrictions is needed. Residents in those areas must stay at home, apart from limited exemptions set out in law. Non-essential retail, indoor gyms and leisure facilities and personal care services must close. Individuals can only meet one person from another household in an outdoor public space. With no bars, no restaurants and no large family gatherings, Italy is facing up to the prospect of a subdued festive season. Italians have until Monday to travel between regions. And here in Milan's central station, like elsewhere across the country, there's been a final rush of traffic before lockdown restrictions come into force. Meanwhile, those travelling to Corsica now have to present a declaration that they've had a recent Covid test, that they have no symptoms and that they haven't been in contact with anyone who has tested positive within the last fortnight. The French island wants to preserve its low infection rates. This was Khartoum, Sudan, December 2018. And this is the sound of Khartoum this Saturday. The chant on the streets is the same, freedom. The mass movement in 2018 and 2019 achieved something that once felt impossible, peacefully deposing Sudan's feared dictator of 30 years, Omar al-Bashir. But two years after his ousting, many Sudanese people say not enough has changed, so they're out in the streets again. Even though Bashir is behind bars, the military still wields huge influence in Sudan. Armenians took to the streets of the capital city of Yerevan on Saturday to commemorate the soldiers killed in the Karabakh conflict. Armenia and the region of Nagorno have declared a three-day nationwide mourning in honor of Nagorno-Karabakh war victims. Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan led Saturday's march as the country began its three-day national mourning. Pashinyan marched to the Yerablur Military Cemetery to light incense on the graves of fallen soldiers along with other senior officials. Both opponents and supporters of the Prime Minister rallied on Saturday as the nation paid tribute to its fallen soldiers. Well, as you mentioned, it's quite a, uh, an important, a significant sum that has been being promised to anyone who, who knows where the TPLF leaders are hiding. The government is promising 200, just over 200,000 euros, that's 10 million Ethiopian burr. And the prime minister had already announced that arresting the TPLF leaders would be a top priority uh, of the government. There has been arrest warrants issued against leaders such as Debrezion, Gebre Mikael and dozens of other leaders 
because so far it's impossible, of course, to know where they are hiding, if they are still in Tigray or if they were able to flee abroad. If they are still in Tigray, it's quite likely that they will be hiding in the mountains of Tigray. It's a quite mountainous region and the areas that have been confirmed to be under the control of the National Army are mainly located around the main roads, but other areas are still extremely difficult to access. Las montañas y un arma de fuego. Rebel leaders and President Faustin Archange Touadera in a room together last November, signing a pact of peace and reconciliation. But that's been broken. At least 11 rebel armed groups are moving towards the capital, Bangui, to put pressure on the government days before a presidential election. Twadera, who is running for a second mandate, is favorite. But the rebels, the Coalition for Patriotic Change, said in a statement the president failed to deliver on an agreement to offer its leaders position in government and funds to disarm their troops. A government spokesman describes this as an attempted coup. En effet. Central African Republic is facing an attempt to destabilize a democratically elected government. We believe former President Bazize and foreign mercenaries are organizing attacks. François Bazize's attempt to run for re-election has been invalidated by the Constitutional Court. In 2013, he was accused of fomenting religious divisions, calling on Christian militia groups known as the Anti-Balaka to attack pro-government fighters known as the Anti-Seleka. North Korean Premier Kim Dok-hun reportedly paid a visit recently to tourist sites at Mount Kumgang, possibly a sign in the pandemic that the regime wants to reopen them to bring about an economic revival. State media said Sunday that the Premier looked around tourist sites and a coastal park in the area and discussed development plans for hotels, golf courses and ski resorts there. Observers say these projects could be included in a new five-year plan to be unveiled at the Workers' Party Congress in January. Earlier this year, the North told South Korea to remove its facilities at Mount Kumgang, where there used to be tours for South Koreans, but the North suspended that demand because of COVID-19.